feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign What's up, everybody, and welcome to FAQ The Madness. My name's Craig, and I just wanted to wish you all a happy Veterans Day. I have a number of things that are going to um, be coming through the pipeline a hundred times over in North Carolina. We have a hundred counties, and I plan on visiting courthouses and sheriff's departments within those counties probably start with um, the areas around my where I live currently but uh, eventually we'll get to a hundred but I wanted to kind of give my homage to the most important veteran that I know that is my mother the first video that I that I did was at the SSA because of the dementia that she currently has for the sake of you know thorough and documenting all the things that I needed to document I thought it would be necessary at least I wanted to to record in the SSA building well it turns out that you know they have signs that say that you cannot record when I found that out the first day when I went with my mother I did record basically audio because I was facing my camera down um, but the next day or maybe two or three days later I, I decided that I was going to challenge the fact that they say that you cannot record so that video was about four months ago as you see here came out about four months ago and received some comments you know there there's a number of different comments some were was supporting the fact that I rec could record and and said that you are allowed to do so and then some were just you know basically sim simply saying you know you're an idiot and uh, you can't record in in the uh, SSA so I thought uh, because a couple of reasons why I'm doing this is I, I this is a new setup my birthday's coming up my f my fiance wife to be got me a neon sign that says FAQ so kind of digging that and uh, just wanted to make sure everything was going the way I needed to but probably just go through and uh, read a couple of the comments that uh, I received and some of my replies uh, my mother did serve in the Navy she did 14 years a lot of good things happened because of her service um, I got to travel to another country I lived in Japan learned a little bit of the language I modeled while I was while I was there not a lot of uh, tall skinny little black boys went around in that time it was around 80 83 to 86 um, learned a lot of independence um, because of the way that my mother was obviously being in the military very strict um, regimented those kind of things but she she kept us in private schools so even in Japan as expensive as it was I mean I probably didn't realize it at the time but as expensive as it was she sent us off to a private school I went to St. Joseph International School travel we had to get up pretty early in the morning and we walked my sister and I walked to um, the front gate then from the front gate we walked to the train station we got on the train and rode about 45 minutes to an hour both train and bus uh, went to school and came back and did it all over again um, so that was a good experience in and of itself at the time that it happened it was actually probably prior to maybe a year or two before we went to Japan my mother received this medal it was the Joint Chief of Staff uh, accommodation this decoration established by the Department of Defense on June 25th, 1963 is awarded by the Office of the Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chief of Staff, and other Department of Defense agencies or joint activities reporting through the Joint Chiefs of Staff. She was stationed at the Pentagon at that time. Now, during that time when it, when it happened, I do remember that we got all dressed up. My mother was dressed up in her, in her whites, 
there was, you know, a bunch of big wigs there and it was a big deal. I don't know if my mother was the first black woman to receive this accommodation, but it was a pretty big deal. And she, she talks about it now, although we haven't talked about it for uh, quite a long time. But when I went into the Air Force, I went into the Air Force in 89. I was a lab tech. And there's a couple things about the Air Force. So when I first even considered going into the Air Force, I remember, well, first of all, my mother was like, at the age when it was time for, when I graduated and I was, she was like, what are you going to do? You're going to go to, uh, you're going to go to college. You're going to go to, to, uh, didn't get a scholarship. Are you going to, are you going to get a scholarship? Uh, she kind of suggested that, uh, I go into, to the air force. She said, go into the air force cause they treat their people better and you probably don't want to go on a ship. So, you know, go into the air force. But the one thing about the air force at that time, was that they were, at least when I was probably a year before I went in, they were still wearing utility greens. They weren't BDUs, so no camouflage, but they were just plain green utility uh, uniforms. And the re reason why I know is because where we lived in Washington, D.C., while my mom was stationed at the Pentagon, was a place called Bowling Air Force Base. And right next to Bowling Air Force Base was a, a naval housing area called Bellevue. It actually was just up the street from where John Hinckley Jr. lived for many years, but at that time he had just gotten there after shooting President Reagan. So I was there during that time, and he lived right up the street from us. But but I, I saw Air Force people all the time, and I hated their uniforms. So I really kind of, and I'd always seen Marines on the naval base that we, you know, naval areas that we lived in, and I always thought their uniforms were shit hot. Um, and the Navy was fine too. Fast forward to when I went in, I still decided to go into the, to the Air Force because there was a time when I wanted to go to medical school and I figured out that I could become a lab tech and probably have an easier path or at least a path that would get me to, to being, um, you know, possibly being a doctor. I never did go to medical school. The, the irony in that whole situation, which is the reason why I'm telling this story, is because I actually wore hospital whites and the hospital whites were basically the same uniforms as the utility greens but just white and when i when we received so in tech school which happened about i don't know my schooling was you know basic training happened went to shepherd air force base uh there you you get to a certain point and they give they issue you your your hospital whites because i had because i had I had ironed my mother's uniforms many times. Um, I put, I learned how to put military creases, which are basically three symmetrical creases that go down the back side, two on the on the right and left side, and then down the middle. So my my hospital whites, I put those in my uniform, and my instructors were like, "What the hell are you wearing those creases down the middle of your back like that for?" And I'm like, "They're military creases. That's what I that's what I learned from my mom." They're like. That's not how we do it in the Air Force, so I ended up sticking out. So, my mother influenced my service for the six years that I was in. I appreciate all of the things that her being in the military, in the Navy, uh, allowed us to do. So, thank you, mother, for your service. Fast forward to now where we are currently. Her having dementia, I need to take care of some business for my mom. We go to the uh, SSA. That is where we are here, and I'll just play a little snippet of uh, kind of like the introduction of it all. Yeah. I'm gonna get everybody to find him right now. This weather, hot one day, cold Sir, next. The last time I was here, uh, the lady that came out, like you, indicated that we can't record in the building. Right. So the CFR that is is listed says that we can. You need to record outside the building, but not inside the building. But inside the building, it says we can. Where? The CFR. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this one right here that you all refer to. Let me show you. So as I said, my mother and I had gone previously, one or two days before. I came by myself. So I live in North Carolina. This is in Anderson, Anderson Indiana. Although the cops were called, I had 
no desire to get arrested. The possibility existed, of course, if I, you know, dissented in some kind of way or was di un uh, unruly or something, dis uh, you know, disturbing the peace or whatever. I really was not intending on making a scene or getting an interaction. So I, I approached this gentleman, the, the officer, in a way which I thought was respectful. I basically said, what I'm saying here is that the signs that you have up actually say that you can. So there's plenty of discussion, obviously, about whether or not that whether it that it's that's what that's saying or not i personally believe that it says that you can record and i think it's actually newsworthy that uh any governmental ag governmental agency would have you not be able to record i do understand that there's time place and manner restrictions restricted areas you can't go in the, the different forms that there are i'm learning all about that uh, and, and when I do finally figure it all out, then, you know, I will, I will act accordingly, but... It says that we can record in the building. So let me ask you this question. This CFR, this CFR that you're referring to, this CFR that you're referring to, I'm not going to leave. You're going to go. Then I'm going to call the police. Okay, call them, please. Okay. Please call them. I'll be right back. Thank you. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I guess maybe before we get into any of the comments, I am just going to lay down the foundations of, of the way I read things and the way I see the way I see them. So first of all, let's go to the CFR. So it's 41 subtitle C chapter 102 subchapter C part 102 through dash 74. So 102 dash 74. Dot four two zero. What is the policy concerning photographs for news, advertising, or commercial purposes? Except where security regulations, rules, orders, or directives apply, or federal court order or rule prohibits it, persons entering in or on federal property may take photographs of a space occupied by a tenant agency for non-commercial purposes only with the permission of the occupying agency concerned. B spaces occupied by a tenant ag agency for commercial purposes only with written permission of an authorized official of the occupying agency concerned and building entrances lobbies foyers corridors or auditoriums for news purposes i hear people all the time talk about the fact that it says except where i'm acknowledging that 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 exception or those exceptions exist those exceptions are when security regulations, rules, orders, or directives, or federal court apply. There are signs that indicate that you cannot record when you go into an SSA building. That is a given. And there are lobbies, foyers, auditoriums, etc. in some locations. Maybe sometimes those locations overlap and the circumstances may be different. But in general, there is a prohibition or a restriction for photography, video recording in that space. Security regulations, rules, or orders. There's no court order that says that you can. But there is a policy in the SSA administration, and it reads as follows. It is GN, so Golf November, 03360.010, Taping interviews in field offices dash policy. And it says, a person may audio record his or her telephone or in-person contact or interview with SSA personnel. Now, there is a subsection or a hyperlink that is within this document. It's Social Security Administration's website that describes or delineates why it is that they have this policy. And it doesn't say anything about, you know, privacy, et cetera. I mean, it does say something about privacy, but it's more directed to the personnel that work for the Social Security, Social Security Administration. So employees should not, however, suggest or encourage the use of recording devices. An audio recording played by a person or his or her representative does not constitute a disclosure by SSA. Therefore, a signed release of any kind is not required. Photography and video recording are prohibited in federal space without the permission of the tenant agency, and it re references the CFR. I believe this USC uh, is a is an error, but we'll go with it. You have the CFR that says that, that delineates when and where and under what circumstances you can 
video record, and then the policy, the SSA policy, that tells you that you can audio record and in what space you can do it in. Now, I don't believe that there is a space that is the same as a Type C space where they conduct these interviews. So, the SSA is telling you that they do not allow recordings in that space where you are conducting an interview. That's, that's the way I read it. That's the way I think the policy is. And I think that for as many years as this policy has been, going, been in existence, which is it was effective 12-03-2010 to present, hasn't been updated to any laws that have occurred or any rulings uh, per jurisdiction, um, you know, the circuit the districts, you know, circuit courts or whatever. It's been in existence and they have been operating under the guise of no recording at all in the building. So they're trying to have their cake and, and eat it too. That being said, I'll just read a couple of these and then uh, I will end this live stream. So, Alan M. Senti, 9457. Dude, the regulation is clear. Except where security regulations, rules, orders, or directives apply. In other words, you still need the permission to record inside. You then, at the end, claim that it is the SSA responsibility to ensure privacy yet you are claiming a right to violate the regulation that they have put in to protect privacy. There are several Supreme Court cases where they've decided that the government may restrict activities inside a building to the purpose of the building. There are other decisions that state uh, the inside government buildings. First Amendment rights may be limited. You have no more right to hold a political rally or a church service inside a government building than you do in my house. Just because there is a First Amendment does not mean it is unlimited. Many times the Supreme Court has limited speech in favor of reasonableness and the interests of society. It is illegal to falsely yell fire in a crowded theater. It is illegal to share national military secrets with an enemy or one may sue for defamation. <clears throat> so, I'm not really certain how I reply to this, but as I said, they have reasonable restrictions. And their restrictions are that you can't record during in-person interviews and those those interviews are not occurring in lobbies foyers corridors or auditoriums they have made a restriction and their signs even though they say their signs even tell you to refer to the cfr and the ssa policy and if you refer to the ssa policy they say you can audio record but you cannot video record during that interview does not mention anything about recording or not recording in these spaces where you can for news purposes or commercial purposes or non-commercial purposes. I kind of agree with this guy, but wait, again, what he's saying, I believe, is is uh, them trying to have their cake and eat it too. So I said, I give you that the government restricts activities inside a building to the purpose of the building. To that end, and for this entity, the SSA, describe its interest in the restriction. It is towards and for restriction of videotaping interviews in field offices allowing but not encouraging audio recordings. They further expound on the interest in, the, in, in this regard, and that's if you click on that link within that uh, policy, this GN00203.001b.3a, if you read it, you will find the purpose of the restriction is not privacy. The SSA signage refers to a CFR that permits videography for news purposes, and if you refer to their policy, it describes what the prohibition is for and why. LaSalmont6792. Uh, I remember that name for some reason because I believe that we have four replies back and forth. He basically says the same thing. Rules are quite clear. An SSA office is a public building, but is a limited public forum, which means the management can make reasonable rules for the use of the facility. No filming in an SSA office is, re is a reasonable rule. The courts have ruled on this issue. No, the jury is not out on this one. The jury has reached a verdict and it is not in your favor. Why don't you read the regulation more carefully and stop wasting everyone's time? I have read the the uh, policy very well. And by the way, I don't know if the dilemma is between people that there are instances where, like courts, for example, for reasonable reasons, you don't want to jeopardize some, a witness in, in a courtroom. You don't want to, you know, have jurors scared or apprehensive to to do their job putting restrictions on filming in those instances i believe is just and reasonable 
And normally the, the judge will have his orders such that, you know, the camera has to face a certain direction away from the jury box, all those kind of things, they're reasonable. And therefore, I believe in the same case and same instance here in the SSA building, the restrictions that they have, it is not a carte blanche or blanket uh, restriction. It is a restriction that, that states you cannot film your interview and the reasons that they have for doing so. It's a liability, I guess, if, if you have people reacting to upset people because their check didn't come or whatever, uh, and they react in a certain way probably doesn't look good for the SSA. So again, they outline why it is that they have that restriction. And I do not believe that it, that it's a blanket uh, restriction. It's very specific, actually. We go back and forth. To clarify, when you say rule, are you referring to their policy? If so, it reads, and I outline it for him. You're correct. Reasonable rules are allowed. That's my my assertion, and he's obviously saying this, that, uh, something different. Nevertheless, filming and recording in an SS office is, is, is prohibited. I respond to him, yes, during an interview, which, can we agree, likely never occurs in Type C spaces. That is, building entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. Signage inside the SSA instructs citizens to refer to the CFR and the SSA policy. If you read one separately, you might believe that, uh, you know, you might get a, misun a misunderstanding of, of what it is, but... If you read them collectively, I believe it, it strictly tells you what uh, gives you direction. So he says, question the law all you want, but don't film or attempt to film in an SSA office. You'll be risking arrest for trespassing if you do. All right. We'll see. Why do you need to record an SSA office? For what purpose? As is the case for me uh, or any uh, situation where someone wants to completely document their experience, with legitimate business. And I mean, legitimate business to me can be just getting public records or making a public rec records request. I don't intend to, to burden the system in any way by just arbitrarily making requests. I have a specific need to conduct business in a way that's accurate and documents all the situations that I go because I communicate between myself and my sister. And in this situation, although audio is is a is a reason that you can do that you can you know record and, and capture that information video is just as good if not better provided that you are not capturing or doing anything illegally with information that you do capture and all of those spaces that that they i mean if you go to the ssa they have very few circumstances where a person is blurting out their social security number or they're walking around holding up the information so somebody can see. So that is why that there are areas that you can go and be and have a person be protected in that circumstance. Now the three part series that I go through, the security guard tells me that he's going to talk to management, management comes out, I show him the CFR. And it's completely different than what he was prepared to bring me because what he was prepared to bring me was what is the SSA policy, which only addresses audio recording. But he had no clue. You'll see in the video if you watch it. He has no clue that the CFR read the way it did. So, but he, he doubled down on the, the policy. Well, this is the policy that we're going to use and this is how we're going to uh, instruct you and I'll get clarification blah, blah, blah. What I did with that information or that statement was I said, if you're going to get clarification, then please do so. I'm going to put a public request in. I'm going to ask for certain information. I asked for all the information that will allow me to, because he would not identify himself. That would give me information regarding who he was, how long he had he'd been working there. I was curious to know when the policy was in place. I later found out that it was in October of 20. Whatever that was, let's see what it was. December of 2010, so many moons ago, <laughs> and that was about four or five months ago. I've yet to hear from them. I've reached out to the SSA, uh, to multiple people with the same type of request and requesting same information, to for clarification on this particular rule, and they have a stock answer that they give you. Surprisingly enough, they either do not want to deal with it uh, or they just been instructed to to uh, respond in this way. I go into basically asking about the, this space. 
I, I do want to give the notion, at least the the understanding that I appreciate all responses that people give regarding this video and the circumstances that surround it. Uh, and I will make it a learning process for me so that I'm not, again, burdening the, the, uh, the system or doing anything that I shouldn't be doing. I'm not going to jeopardize myself, at least not at this time, without knowing the things, the ins and out of this particular circumstances. Because there are other, I don't have it in front of me right now, but a ruling was ruled in one circuit, wherever Colorado is, I think the 10th circuit, and another ruling was was ruled by a judge that was completely different. The circuit courts are split on whether or not it, it is something that you can or cannot do. So that we all, when I say all, all the First uh, Amendment community, and to me that, that includes First Amendment auditors, regular people, and also First Amendment auditor trolls. Those people who make fun of, <laughs> because really that's really what they're doing. They're making fun of their actions. Uh, they're, you know, making a parody of it. What do you call it? Uh, and which obviously kind of elevates their their First Amendment rights as it, it pertains to utilizing the information that they use, fair use, <laughs> the videos that give them tons of play. It's one community, though. We're all dealing with First Amendment issues, whether or not you can do what it is that I did here. So, and I say, at the end of the day, I feel we have the right to do so. In every instance, I would exercise that right uh, would be done so legally and responsibly. Appreciate the question. I think what I was alluding to was that I do appreciate uh, people who to check out the video. I, I don't care whether in the first 10 seconds that you agree or disagree and you reply or, or leave a comment, or it's like f go through and and you still disagree. Now, of course, I would hope, <laughs> hope and pray, as uh, the tired uh, auditor or was the tired terminator says, we hope, wish, and pr pray that you do watch the entire video, and then give your comment, like, su like subscribe, and share. <laughs> One for the team. So FAQ The Madness, uh, raw and unedited video and audio of an event would be considered very viable and illustrative under the best evidence rule in law. The Supreme Court has held that people can video or film anything which their eyes can see anywhere, including in a federal building and without permission. You can even record in a courtroom unless court is in session at the time and the judge has decided not to allow filming and recording. And if the judge does not set that prohibition, then you can record a court in session. In the absence of a prohibition, the law is permissive. And that's a fundamental tenet in the law. In the absence of a no U-turn sign, you can certainly make a U-turn, for example. That provision in the United States Code restricting the taking of video and audio recording in federal buildings is un unconstitutional on its face. It's a law made in contravention of the Constitution from the get-go. So it is void from the get-go. It is not a law. It's the same to have to admit it, but it's gotten to the point in our society that whenever you go out of doors, you should have a camera rolling at all times so you can document everything that may happen to you and in real time. You never know when the uh, contents of your camera might have to be entered into evidence in a court of law. Again, these are screwed up times in which we live, but the times in which we live also provide us with ample means of recording every single thing we do out of doors. So even on your own property, you should have a camera with audio recording capability rolling at all times because chances are there are cameras recording you at all times when you are out of doors, especially if you live in a town or a city. Interesting. I mean, I, I agree with her and I, <laughs> what I wrote was I've never heard it said that way. I was certainly looking up though, fakes. And I haven't actually gotten back to this particular like best evidence rule in law. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I don't purport to be a lawyer. I don't. I I am thoroughly trying to figure out the laws that pertain to this particular instance. And as I indicated, I have an interest in uh, body cam footage. Uh, footage. When I went to Anderson, Indiana, and had this incident, I actually was recording and forgot to. I mean, not that I forgot, but my my camera was uh, ran out of memory. So my camera ran out of memory 
I didn't have very much footage. So because that occurred, I went to the Anderson Police Department and I made a public request for the footage of the officers that responded. I guess that's a spoiler alert, but if you do watch, you will see that the, that the cops did arrive and they came and addressed me or interacted with me. So I had tons of footage, and in that footage, at the end of everything, because their body cam footage were rolling, three officers responded, and their dash cams, when they parked, one in front of each other, their, their dash cam footage was rolling the entire time. So I was able to see that after I had left... And they finished and walked around to uh, their cars that they had a nine minute conversation with management. First, to one manager that I had not seen before. And secondly, um, the, the manager that I that I was uh, that I had interacted with nine minutes. They disengaged their body cam footage and none of that conversation was had or, you know, could be, uh, you know, we're, I'm not privy to it. I'm only privy privy to between all three of the officers, even when one went one place and tried to have a, a private conversation, and when they called their supervisor and, and supposedly uh, received word that, no, you can't record there, all of that footage was lost. So the reason why I mention that is because fast forward to coming back home to North Carolina, I found out that body cam footage is not considered public records in North Carolina. There's a whole entire process that um, dictates how it is that the body cam footage and dash cam footage are handled, and it basically goes through the courts. Uh, the courts, collecting agency or the, the agency that is, uh, I forget what they call it, but that is in, in charge of that, that footage is not able to release that footage. There's two ways of doing it, and I, I, I would pull up that particular law, but I've rambled long enough about this particular issue, but... Body cam footage, in my opinion, if it's worthy of you starting the body cam footage and they have already deemed, at least in Anderson, Indiana, that within a certain proximity of the location where the officer is responding, their their body cam footage automatically starts. And then if they fall over, if they uh, if they find themselves in a prone position, it will also start. So if it's if it's worthy of starting then why not during the investigation do you keep that footage going? Why would you affect the report by disabling or turning it off? I don't get it. So now that I'm in North Carolina, I would like to find out about body cam footage, you know, how to collect it or how it's collected. When can they disengage? When can they do, when do they have to gauge all of the, the laws regarding that? I, I'm, I am in the process of learning right now. See how many we have to go. And then one person, Jeff Goodman, QB2NG, he just simply said, because he can, and I wrote, simply put. Uh, you may want to check on that the courts have ruled that government buildings are limited or non-public forms, which can regulate what happens in their building. So that's someone responding, and she writes, no, the C Supreme Court has not decided you may record anything the eyes can see. Oh. Oh, those names are kind of close. Allen, Cinti, 9457. If I am wrong, you will cite the state, the, the case. If you can't cite the case, then we'll know you're talking out your butt. And this is me. I agree, and in the case of the SSA, they have a policy in place that governs photography inside of their space. More specifically, according to their policy, taping interviews in field offices, a person may audio record his or her telephone or in-person contact or interview with SSA personnel. The reasons for this restriction is thoroughly outlined in that subsection or the uh, hyperlink the CFR they cite starts off with except where the SSA policy again outlines what and why they are they have restricted the activity of videography. It does not negate the default permission granted. I say to him, I'm not an attorney. I likely can't cite a case that says that. If you can indicate the timestamp where I said that, I would appreciate it. Uh, I do recall saying you mean you meaning the officer can't trespass my eyes or ears. But again, I couldn't cite a case that supports that yet. I'm going to learn. I'm going to find it out. As it stands, I believe that the signage in the SSA building defaults with three scenarios where videography is permitted. For non-commercial purposes, only with permission of the occupying agency. Commercial purposes, only with written permission of an authorized official of the occupying agency. And building entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. 
all of which are scenarios that persons entering in or on federal property may take photographs of. The default is clarified by any exception, security, regulations, rules, orders, or directives created by their policy, in this case, taping interviews and field offices policy. To me, it's very clear. He says, yes, it does. So now he goes through, if I remember correctly, this person, hmm. okay. So this is what he says, at FAQ The Madness, photography and video videotaping in interior federal facilities is allowed under conditions set forth in A through C. This looks like, this looks like a, like he copied the information on the memo, uh, 2018 memo, which I've heard people, and I don't think that this is the case, but I've heard people refer to the memo as, uh, as if it was law. I don't believe that it's law. I think it's like a guideline to let you know that this is what it says. And it does have a little blurb about this. And it mentions the SSA having uh, prohibitions on photography. But again, I believe that the, that the prohibition that they have, the sign, even though it has a, a cross through um, a camera, it tells you to look at the CFR and the policy. And if you put those two together, it is not telling you that you cannot record in the entire building. That is my belief. It's a story I'm sticking to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I remember how it is that my mind is thinking as, it, as I'm reading these. I'm sure that I may come across. Uh, so my channel, you can, you can say anything that you want to with, within reason and according to the community guidelines. I remember thinking after I just read that, that that seemed familiar and it sounded like the 2018 memo verbiage. I say that is an excerpt from the operational readiness order directed towards federal protective services. Although it gives guidance for the agency involved enforcing rules and regulations governing conduct on federal property, FPS, it is not the regulation and is not actually how the, how the regulation reads. My assertion remains the, that the CFR defaults at for non-commercial purposes only with the permission of the occupying agency, commercial purposes only with written permission of an authorized official of the occupying agency, and building interests, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes, all of which are scenarios that persons entering in or on federal property may take photographs of. This default permission is clarified by an exception. Now, I think I might have taken what I what I wrote above and just copied it there because it sounds like I said the same damn thing. <laughs> so keep reaching. Ha ha ha. Emoji. Keep reaching. Clown. Twist to any way you want. You're breaking building policy, which is enforceable by law. If you were so sure of yourself, you would have continued and waited for the police. Now, this wonderful individual obviously did not uh, take the time to see and i don't know if i had not uh, posted it yet so i mean fair warning that it's possible that he just did not know that the cops did come you will find now see i don't want to give it away because i would love for you to be intrigued and watch the entire series but i will just give you some indication that the cops did come and i did address the cops i didn't run i stayed and i talked to the cops in fact i got all of their body footage body cam footage so, Andy Aveillon, 6545, go check out the rest of the videos. Please, thank you. Like and subscribe. <laughs> that's a great point. See, that's how I answered. That's a great point. This is why I did just that. You can check out the whole interaction here, part two. And that's only two of three. So there's still two other videos from this one. Oh, this is a public service uh, mention, and I think that uh, because I saw him, I reached out to this is a this is a public service. Thank you for watching the video. He actually, that's why I mentioned uh, he actually gave me a video, sent me a video that was a very good breakdown of a judge basically saying that the it se it seems as if the SSA is trying to have their cake and eat it too by saying that the that the signs with the cross through the camera is saying that you can't record in the whole entire building but they specify 
that you can for news purposes and in certain areas. And then also in their own policy, do they not say that you can't record in the entire building, but that you can't record during your interview process? Sound like a broken record? Because to me, it's that simple. All right, so we are near the end. Why do you need to go inside and record anyway? You must not have a job at all. All right, so I do have a job. I run an eBay business. And I don't run it myself. I mean, I it's my job to do so day to day. But uh, my fiance and I, my wife to be, um, we run the business together. But she works during the day, and any extra time that she has that uh, that supplements what I do, sourcing usually we like to go out and, and get stuff. Then she helps with the business. But we have a business together, and that's what I do every day. Saturday and Sunday I normally take off, or you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday I might uh, you know prepare myself for the week to come, do all of my uh, listing or photographing, cleaning, all that stuff, and then um, and then list it uh, throughout the week, and then ship and, and respond to uh, complaints, which we don't have very many at all. Very few complaints because we run a tight ship. <clears throat> I believe in quality products at a quality price and unreasonably <laughs> or exceptionally fast shipping. And the reason why we can ship so fast is because our uh, post office is literally a stone's throw away from where I live. So, And I reply, please let it be something nice. Oh, yeah. My answer was to obtain a full and accurate record. I'm self-employed. Also to challenge the fact that the CFR cited and internal policy are in conflict with each other. I think ultimately that's what I'm saying. The conflict between what the CFR says and what the policy reads. So, so all of that to say, and I was inspired by, let me find out. Let me duplicate this. Pause that. Sorry. All right. Uh, who was it? I've been checking out uh, Frauditor Wrangler. You know, I, I, I said this before. First, the First Amendment, I didn't go out. I mean, I, I did go out the second day to see if what they were saying was correct. That is, that you can't, that they would not allow me to record. I was essentially challenging. Uh, I went there to challenge that what it said because I had read and thought that you could. So I know that they're now, and then, you know, First Amendment found me, didn't go out looking for it. But once I got into it, having a specific desire or need to do business, conduct business at the SSA, then that's when I started doing my due diligence to see, you know, to see about it. So, and I'm continuing to do that. So, but now I am listening to a ton of different people who do First Amendment audit, audits, not just in the SSA building. It seems as though that people have kind of conceded to the fact that you can't record in the SSA. And their process, they make you go through all these hoops where they make it difficult for you to kind of get to the bottom of it. Uh, it's going to take an injunction or something like that in order, kind of like what uh, LIA did in New York. It's going to take some type of injunction to say, hey, this these signs that you have and this rule that you're trying to say that you can never record in this area, even though you say that you can. And by the way, if you did in fact allow somebody for commercial purposes, for either commercial purposes, non-commercial purposes, or news purposes, if you did allow somebody to go into that building, one, where would you allow them to record? I say that you would allow them to record in publicly accessible areas, such as a lobby, an auditorium, a foyer, the entrance of the building. But you wouldn't allow them, and in this particular place, you can clearly see sections that people are punch their information very secretively. Then they sit down and they wait. Then they're called up by number, not by their social security number, not by their name, just by a number. They're called up into an area where they address a person that's behind another glass area that's 
taking their information, but they're not even really taking their information because they have all the information, supposedly, if they entered it correctly. And very rarely may, may they have to uh, give their social security number out loud or written on a piece of paper. It's all done basically very protectively, protected. <laughs> I mean, what would you have to do if you did allow news, a uh, news person to come and, um, and film? You wouldn't change your whole entire setup. It's already done. Thank you for checking out my video. Please like and consider subscribing. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Stop!